Now we should be all right. Now we can now see you. You can see us, and we can see you. Perfect. OK. Uh, I think it's 8 o'clock. Oh, yeah, it's right 8 o'clock. So that's great. I grabbed my watch this morning. What a day. It's already the week starting out. Um, we will start the meeting then. And I can get a, a motion from one of the members regarding the minutes. I'd appreciate it. Okay. Motion to accept the meeting, the minutes from the last meeting. Okay, and Richard, Tricia gave a second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Minutes have passed. Thank you very much. We're going to continue on with our discussion on digital marketing with the Quinnipiac members. So who wants to lead out? Or Tim? Oh, yeah, let, me, let me just chime in. I hope everybody had a, a great Thanksgiving, nice long weekend. I don't know if it was a long weekend. I suspect some of you may have been working on this project, but uh, is everybody at home now? Anybody, anybody on campus? No, I think we're all home. Everybody's, all everybody's home, home. And, and remaining there probably till January sometime. Is that correct? Till February 1st is when we come back, I think. Uh, February 1st. Yeah. I just have one question. Did you bring all your laundry home for your mom? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Because that's what used to happen to me. <laughs> Very good. All right, David, good morning. Um, good morning. What I'm going to suggest um, is the um, uh, the worksheet to-do to, to list that you sent out after last meeting, I think, was put in a, in a nice order. Um, good, good plan. I'm going to suggest that we may tackle it uh, from that perspective. I think today is, um, from my standpoint, this is like crossing a bridge today. You know, we've done a lot of discovery. We've done a lot of educating. You guys have done a lot of research. But as I think I said at the close of the last meeting, I'm hoping at the conclusion of today's meeting that we actually have the formulation of a, of a plan and that we can start messaging and we can get, um, as I, I always say, walk before you run. We can start tiptoeing into the market with some messages before the end of this month which is right on our schedule. So um, I'm pretty excited about today. I hope you guys are as excited and energized. So um, we're waiting for you to tell us how we should do this. So uh, David, I'm gonna turn it over to you and ask you to direct the uh, presentations, please. Okay. Um, if I am not mistaken, I'm trying to pull up the email right now, but if I'm not mistaken, we had the, uh, the website as our first well, it was a mar the marketing tactics team was first. Oh, marketing tactics, sorry. Yep, mm -hmm. I'm pull pulling up the document. So, yeah, marketing great. tactics, cool. Yeah, the personas, the, you know, the... There we go. Yep. So, let's see. Uh, Jack, John, Shay, Brenda, Who would like to go first out of you, or who's presenting the content? I'll go first on the persona part. I have the first two on here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> for the recent college graduates, um, that's the one that we had on the previous document. Um, so that's just discussing um, the persona that we would like for um, the younger demographic, the people who are coming out of college. So for this one, we did Dave, who was 22, fresh out of college. Um, and we marketed it towards people who uh, don't really want to go to a city <clears throat> and want the low cost and the kind of the quality of life you get in a small town. Um, and then for another young demographic, because we want to also include people who are starting families, we looked at somebody who would be closer in age to 30, but still young. Um, so for this, for this one, it's Hannah, she's 30. She's worked in a city um, her whole life since getting out of college, but she's recently engaged and is looking to settle down. So she's looking for a town with good schools to begin a family in, but also looking for a, a town that's not too far from the city, um, but also wants to transition to a job in town. So she wants good opportunity in that town as well. Um, they want to invest their money that they've made in a home. So they're looking for a town that has um, good quality of life, good neighborhoods. And so for her, we, for her and for the recent graduate, the um, initiatives that we're looking at um, directing them towards is the LinkedIn um, college partnerships and programs, the trade shows. Um, and then we think that 
support messaging, the cost, the housing, opportunity, quality of life, and the culture of the community is going to be very important to um, messaging to these um, personas. So for both the both the recent college graduate and the starting family, it's the same messages? Right. We think that since they're, they're both in the young demographic, obviously there's um, uh, different um, messages in the, in the sense that like one's looking for um, more of the quality of life because of they're starting a family. However, mm -hmm. costs is still important to a recent graduate as well as somebody trying to start a family. They're both pretty young, so they're not that established in um, uh, their finances, I would say. Um, so I think that the overlap between the two, because they're still both very young. There's, you know, you could have a 26 year old who's looking to settle down as well as a 30 year old or, you know, mm -hmm. so I think these personas, um, although unique um, in some ways, they're, they have a lot of overlap to a message too. Fair. Um, one of the things that I will note, remember for a starting family, they're really focused on a safe environment, a optimal environment for raising their kids. So there's going to be some messages that are going to be different between those two. For the college grad, I think that the messages that you've pulled out are solid. For the starting a family though, you wanna get things about um, the safety of the community, the quality of the education system, opportunities to for um, things with kids, so make sure that the kids become a part of it. So while the, the core message, I think, does relate to both of them, for the starting families, there's additional messages that you'll want to pull out for it. So cool. Thank you, Jack. Mm -hmm. So Jack, your, your target, um, that, that's workforce development, right? As opposed to bringing in businesses. Correct. These these two are to bring in workforce. Um, we have businesses later down in the personas. Very good. Very good. All right. Thank you for that. Of course, one of the things I've mentioned before that is going to be a little bit of a challenge is that um, you know Wallingford does not have a vacancy issue. So um, you know, for younger people to come to town, sometimes they find it a little bit difficult to afford. Uh, so. It's one thing if we had a housing vacancy issue that we had, you know, which also when there's a vacancy issue, it drives prices down, right? So uh, when there's the lack of a vacancy issue, uh, which is a good thing for us, um, it, it's, you know, sometimes a little more difficult to attract the younger folks uh, who are just getting started. And, uh, you know, for example, and I don't know what price points, you know, apartments are where you live, but we just, at a, an economic development project, which was uh, 200 new apartments down by our new um, Hartford Rail system, which is uh, a commuter rail. Those are one bedroom apartments that are uh, starting at 1,400 a month. And if you get an extra you know, closet, it's still a one bedroom apartment that's got what they call an auxiliary room on it, which is again, no bigger than a closet, uh, that's 1,600 a month. So just to give you a feel for um you know price points now that may or may not be I, I see some of you shaking your heads you know saying whoa i don't know if i could you know do that right out of school my first job i don't know but just i just want to put it in perspective for you yeah all right we, that's a really good point tim and what we can do is for any messaging that goes out to them really focusing on those positive benefits downplaying the cost so that they they see the benefits as or see the cost as worth it because of the benefits that are being offered. Thanks, Especially Jeff. for a starting family, they people are more willing to pay a premium if it offers their kids a better opportunity. So, cool. Um, so who had the next, the older workforce and I don't know how you guys ended up breaking it up because I do not see so who was talking about older? Yeah, I can talk about those. We kind of wrote these all together, so they're not as easily broken up into people. Okay, that was kind of my sense was that there was like a uniformity in how they were presented. So yeah, <laughs> that makes way more sense. So go ahead. <laughs> so the older workforce is more towards not getting people to like, who are in the city to move in, but people who already live around Wallingford to come work in Wallingford. So what we have as our persona is Diane, she's 52. And she lives in a nearby city. We put her in North Haven. 
but she's working in Hartford at a large manufacturing company, mm. but she's sick of the drive into Hartford. So she wants to work somewhere closer to home, somewhere with less traffic to get into work. Uh, and so what we're focusing on really with the older population is the ease of access into Wallingford and the job opportunities in Wallingford. Uh, so I, we think the initiative links for the older workforce is going to be more with the LinkedIn and Facebook messaging, uh, just getting out word about, hey, this is what's in Wallingford for the workforce. Uh, and then for messaging, talking about uh, the community aspect, the ease of access into Wallingford, so the commuter rail and the highway access, as well as the businesses in town and the opportunities for work in the town. Um, and then do you, I can... do, do you want me to do manufacturing? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, before, you, before you move on, Shay, let's just have an opportunity for people to ask questions or comment before we, we switch gears, if you wouldn't mind. So, Breno, one of the, uh, and again, for everybody's edification, so we now have this, you know, nice commuter rail system. Obviously, you know, given the pandemic, it, it's been compromised in a very, very big way. Very few people are using it and very few people are traveling to work. But it has started to gain some momentum. We do have 16 trains a day that stop in Wallingford. Uh, so it's made a nice, easy ride to Hartford, New Haven. So it, it all works pretty well. As far as people outside of town getting off the train in Wallingford and then going to work, the, um, the rub that I've heard is that last mile. How do I get from the train station to my job? Mm -hmm. uh, which has proven not to be a small thing. So, of course, everybody says just Uber. It's, but, you know, there's there's price points to the commute. So it's, and there's there's, there's timing. So anyway, just, just know that that's one of the things that, uh, you know, Wallingford does not have a an active transit system, you know, beyond, beside the rail. It does not have a, an active taxi service. Yeah, I think the taxis, if there are, if I ever see one in Wallingford, they come into New Haven. And, um, so there's not, there's not those ride shares that are floating around the street. So yeah. I, I guess my question would be, does Wallingford have like a public bus system? Is there some way you could maneuver routes with the public bus to make that more easily accessible? Wallingford does have a public bus system, but it is, um, um, the frequency of the stops are, not good. It, it's it's one of those. It's there. Um, you know, it's, it's it's common to see the bus either empty or with two people on it. it it's just um, and it, it makes a loop around the town. I think I'd have, to, I'd have to take another look. We actually did amend it with the state a number of years ago, where they are making a stop up in the industrial parks. Uh, we actually tried to get them to put, add a stop onto the Amazon facility up on Research Parkway. And the state was unwilling to take and, and change the route. So, but you know, given the right opportunity, I think uh, you know we, we could we could push harder. So, there's a system in place. Um, it's uh, it's not it's not heavily used. So, but I think yeah. I think yeah. schedule and timing has a lot to do with that. Yeah, I, and, and I the, work with a lot of people with disabilities, and it is difficult. Um, because we were uh, the facilities off of Thorpe Ave in Wallingford, and it is difficult to get them from the train station to wherever they have to go. So it is an issue in, in Wallingford with that. What about bikes? Like New York City has like the rent a bike, or like uh, they also have electric bikes too in some cities. So, yeah. Yeah, so one of the things for that, Chandler, though, is that you need to have a sufficiently large population for it to work so that the bikes are in constant motion. Um, so while for for New York City, for Miami, for Chicago, those work because there's constantly people who are renting them, moving them, and then people who come by and pick them up and whatnot. In, so the bikes are in constant use. Um, it usually isn't as productive if you have a, a largely stable population where they take the bikes to a destination and then they sit there and then you take the bikes back in the evening because um, then the, the distribution of the bikes isn't as strong. And another quick comment on that, as Tim said, what's key, if you're looking to uh, move and become employed at a business, you need consistency and predictability in the transportation system. So that, for example, bikes are a great idea. I'm a bicyclist. I get it. However, I, you know, trying to do that in a snowstorm in February might be difficult. And so you can't call in sick that day because it's snowing. So it's a great idea, a good suggestion right on the right track, but it has to be a system that's predictable um, and consistent. 
Yeah, great, great point, Rob. And David, to your point um, about scale, uh, you know, the city of Hartford uh, did a pilot for a year, mm -hmm. and um, it did not, it, it failed because of just lack of, of uh, ridership. Among some of the things, they had some issues with pilferage and things like that, people stealing the bikes. But bottom line is they couldn't get enough people to ride them in a city like Hartford. So I don't think that, that uh, that'll transition well into a community like Wallingford that's a fraction of the size. So if you Good can, thought, you know. yeah. So that isn't a complete outright rejection, Chandler, of the idea and finding something like that that is a communal and especially environmentally friendly way would be totally good. Um, we just need to figure out a, a more sustainable option that's probably going to require centralization of the resources. Yeah, but real quick, uh, just to finalize this and uh, go move on, but um, the bicyclics idea might be attractive to those young college grads who just want to come into town and, and partake in the activities and things like that. So there's a place for that, but just not necessarily uh, applicable to the workforce uh, and, and getting a job and working yeah. for a business. I'm wondering, do we know presently, is there a bus stop at the train station? I, I, I don't know that to be the case. So. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> We should we should at least find that out. Yeah. Yeah. I believe there's one at Scow now. But I think that's, that's the closest. And that's that's yeah. fairly close. Yeah. You know, just so we can we can move on, but um, uh, I just wanted to share one opportunity. We have we have a, a steel company, mm -hmm. Albrecht Steel in Wallingford, that has a third shift that was looking to attract more people. Uh, just a, a broader, you know, geography. So, um, and, and specifically New Haven, they felt that they could reach into the New Haven market. So what we tried to do is leverage the, uh, the commuter rail. Um, but when they drop them off, you know, at, at the train station, how do they get to Oldbrook Steel? So we actually worked with Masonic Coleman Hospital. I don't know if you're familiar with them or not, but they have a lot of these little mini buses where they move their, their, uh, uh, their you know, their folks around. And, but they don't use them you know, think of the third shift time frame. There's not too many folks going to doctor's appointments at that hour. So, Masonic, uh, Ulrich was going was gonna to lease a Masonic bus for the third shift to shuttle people back and forth. So, we had, we had made that connection, and, um, you know, that was getting a little momentum. And then, of course, you know, COVID hit, and the whole thing kind of came apart. But uh, uh, anyway, just, just so that you, for your edification, you know that we thought about, you know, how do we help businesses move that last mile, you know? So. Yeah. It might be something that we can actually turn to the businesses that are benefiting from outside people coming in and saying, hey, if you, along with a couple of other businesses, all partner together to do a chartered shuttle from the train to your place of employment, then right. you can all pull in people from outside. So that could, that could, has some pretty good potential. We'll have to look into that. Shay. Um, so this is our manufacturing perso um, business persona. Um, so we think that um, an automotive company is looking to relocate in a town of Wallingford. I mean, in a, into a town um, with a good labor pool and uh, a demand for manufacturing jobs. Um, they need a proper building equipped for their manufacturing needs, and they prefer low utility costs um, due to their heavy use of electricity for production. Um, they're looking for a town that will accompany them in finding a building. And if they need to construct a building, they're looking for a town that will help them in a, with a smooth transition in terms of getting approvals and the construction of the building. Um, so we think we can reach these this target through um, flyers, email marketing, LinkedIn, and contact through brokers. Um, so the message that we wanna get across to them is our cost of electricity the buildings we have that would be available to manufacturing companies, the town of Wallingford's um, strong relationships with the businesses and our hubcap program for the workforce. Cool. So the uh, um, this may just be a, a typo, but it says flyers email marketing as uh, with apostrophe S. Is that supposed to be flyers comma email? I think marketing? it's supposed to. Yeah, it's it's flyers. Okay, totally fine. <laughs> just wanted to make sure that I understood that. Yeah. Um, so the key for this is how do we get to the decision maker? 
um, at each of the company? How do we identify them and make sure that we're connecting to them? But that could very well be done through the LinkedIn component. Yeah, um, in our like next part, we kind of go in depth of like how we're gonna talk, like how we're gonna connect with like manufacturing businesses specifically and more into that, like more in depth. Is that all the questions for Shay's part? I think so. All right, I can move on to the STEM and office tenant businesses. Yep. Uh, so this persona is looking at STEM companies that are looking for new office space, mostly in order for expansion. Um, we're having this company that's moving out of a space in the city, but they want skilled labor, but less overhead costs because living or renting in the city is super expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and so our initiatives that we're looking for with them are using the flyers in the email marketing. Again, it's supposed to be a comma in there. Don't know how we keep missing that one. Oh. Um, uh, LinkedIn, contact through the brokers, and also working with the State Bioscience Caucus and BioCT. Uh, the messaging we want to use for them is the cost of electricity, the accessible workforce, and the pre-furnished buildings or easy-to-furnish buildings that Wallingford may have, and just the availability of space in Wallingford. Cool. I'm seeing a nice level of consistency between these because they are similar enough. Um, and yet there's enough differentiation in the actual message being sent out. So that's, that's great. I like it. Um, I, I can do the small businesses. Please. Um, so for small businesses, we had um, Sydney who lives in East Hartford and recently started uh, her own bake shop. Um, and she's married with one kid and she's looking to settle in an environment that's conducive for both business and family life. Um, and she's considering relocating for higher foot traffic and a more small business friendly community. Um, but one of her main concerns is keeping her overhead costs low and due to high competition, she wants to locate in a very community driven town, um, where she'll be able to utilize less expensive marketing strategies. Mm. Um, and her goal is to compare multiple towns in the surrounding area to figure out which one provides her with the best chance for, for success. Um, and we think that Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn would be the best um, ways to link this with them. And for the messages um, would be cost of rent, community feel, and cheaper marketing tactics. That's good. Because for a small business, oh, sorry, go ahead. Is a common denominator on the messaging, like um, the uh, you know LinkedIn. I hear, I'm hearing Facebook, LinkedIn. What was the other one you said, John? You said three, I think. Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Okay. So, Brenda, can I go back to you for a second on the office, um, which I think we've shared. Uh, you know, that is that is a significant weak point right now. That if Wallingford has an economic Achilles heel, that is it, because. Um, I think I've shared that, you know, 40 years ago when there was a, a huge shift of, of workforce desirability to work not in the cities, but in the suburbs, Wallingford had this boom uh, build of office buildings. And now pre-COVID, the shift was going back to the cities. It's left us with um, about 30% of our, what we call class A office space. So these aren't, you know, lousy offices. These are nice office buildings. 30% of our Class A office space is vacant. Uh, the Bristol-Myers facility, which was a million square feet of pristine office space, was actually knocked down because it could not fill it. All right, so that's a significant um, opportunity. Um, you mentioned mostly bioscience. So how do we talk to, uh, you know, it could be insurance companies. It could be, you know, any other types of, uh, we've got, some, a couple of very strong engineering firms that occupy a lot of office space. So um, I mean, please, when we start talking about messaging, we really need to think of office as probably the largest opportunity. And then um, say we have to we have to reach a very broad audience of professional disciplines in order to take and, and build some vacant office space. Yeah, I think we did uh, somewhat 
not talk about that. But I think with that, most of what it's going to be is also through the broker contact, which we do have uh, some steps with that in our implementation plan, just to further work with brokers and expand um, the brokers we have good relationships with. Great, thank you. Um, speaking to the small business, I, I think it's great that Sydney wants to move. And what I caught from that is that she's probably going to set up some kind of a matrix that's going to say, okay, these are all the things that I need to become successful where I want to be. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if we should set up, it doesn't have to be specific to Sydney and her bakery, but just to a small business, some kind of a matrix that says these are all of the things that makes Wallingford attractive. And we know some of them are already as far as the electric is concerned, uh, the demographics, what are the demographics of the school system, the surrounding area. So if, if there's a person like Sydney who wants to open a bakery, well, she what, doesn't want to only have to rely on Wallingford. She wants to get North Haven, Cheshire, and Durham, you know, that, that type of surrounding area. So if we do, if we start thinking of it from a small business standpoint, the, the STEM and office space thing is a completely different one. But from a small business standpoint, if we can think of a matrix that any small business can plug their thoughts into, their business into, and say, oh, yeah, these are all the things, or these are nine out of the ten things that will make this an attractive area for me, it will probably be one step. We're saving them the work of doing it. And also, it's one step closer to, well, Cheshire's not doing it, or North Haven's not doing it, or Southington's not doing it. They've done a lot of the work for me already. So maybe something in our advertising or our thinking that we may want to think about. So. Yeah, that, that actually ties into one thing that I noted that um, for the marketing tactics for each of the businesses, we should have something, some sort of information packet, either virtual or physical. And if it's virtual, it could be the website directly where it lays out, here's all this information that how do you actually move your business here to the community? What resources are available? Um, possibly this information matrix of like, here's all the reasons. What we want to do is we want to move them away from their short-term emotion because the gut reaction when someone sees moving your business is, oh, no, I don't want to do that. That's too much effort. Even if their mindset is, hey, I think I'm ready to move on. We want to get them into the long-term thinking of where the emotion is largely removed and they can more rationally consider, here's the advantages of moving to Wallingford. And wow, those outweigh all the advantages of the other places that I could potentially move to. Yeah, good point. And just to take that a step further, if you could all hear me, this is Anthony. Yep. Um, you know, I, I, I look at what we as a, as a, as a town would find desirous with type of business, what kind of business, if, you know, just for argument's sake, let's say bakeries, right? So we want to target bakeries and you have that, that, uh, that checklist of reasons why it's, it'd be great. But then from a targeting standpoint, you know, target bakeries and go after bakeries with a packet set, you know, of why Wallingford is a great place to locate a bakery. And then you target, you know, 70 bakeries within the you know, a geographic region, uh, and then you could solicit bakeries is a terrible I idea. I mean, we wouldn't target bakeries, but, you know, say it was a manufacturing company, you know, and say you wanted a certain type of manufacturing company because they're heavy uh, capital base, which is going to help from a, from a tax revenue standpoint. You know, these are the types of things that, that you know, I, I look at what we, how we target, we target specific uh, industries or, or companies, and you have the available uh, information out there through LinkedIn or whatever uh, type of resource you want to use to do the marketing, you can get very, very specific on the types of things. So as a part of the overall strategy, um, mm -hmm. you know, we, uh, uh, from, from a Wallingford perspective, should identify very specific industries that would be ideal. What would, what's, you know, what's the holy grail? What, kind, what types of businesses do you want to have here in town? And then you do some some very specific marketing to go after these guys. And I think if you put together a nice checklist and you put together a real strong package, you know, you know, putting two and two together real becomes very easy for uh, you know a, a company who's even considering the potential to move. You know, Anthony brings up a good point, and, and let's stay on the subject of bakeries for a second. 
there's a bakery out of Rhode Island who moved to Wallingford not to bake bread, but to use it as a distribution center. So, yep. you know, a lot of times we'll think, okay, we've got a bakery. You're going to move your equipment here. You're going to bake your bread, and you're going to start delivering it from Wallingford. Well, they actually have it in Rhode Island but they have the distribution center here in Wallingford and it's nice centrally located. They can move all over the state of Connecticut from this point. And it was a very attractive thing for them. So mm -hmm. the other buzz that I've been getting, uh, we just recently had an article for, is a proton center? What's, what's the full name? Proton Beam Therapy Center. Uh, proton Beam Therapy Center, which is a state of the art cancer treatment. It's gonna go into Wallingford soon. And um, there's been some buzz about that. And part of the article was, well, there's already several hospitals that are near, be it Gaylord, be it Masonic, be it Ashler, that type of thing. Mid-state's not far away. And um, a lot of this therapy can be used in the, for the hospital's use. And uh, so there's going to be a lot of ancillary businesses that will tack on to that, medical businesses that will tack on to that. So... There's a lot of positives in that respect. Those are the things we got to start thinking about zeroing in on, I think. Yeah, that's really cool. I think it's a great point. You know, quite often you get the bell cow, right? So you get, you get a leader in industry or category leader that will bring other businesses with it. So as we target, that's a, that's a great point. Mark. You got to keep that in mind. It's not just all who's attracting a single business. It's attracting someone else that may say, hey, I want to feed off of that business. Yeah. Right? We, we've got initiatives in town where we've introduced businesses to businesses for supply chain opportunities uh, just to make sure. You would be amazed how businesses can be in the same industrial park and they never talk to each other. They, they uh, you know, they literally, they focus on their business. They don't know what the guy, you know, the next block over is even doing. Never mind, you know, can, can, is there some synergy that we can, you know, benefit from? So, you know, and I don't want to take up too much more time, but it, it's hitting my head and now my mouth is really moving. This proton thing, they do have another facility somewhere in the, in the United States. Where, where, where is it? Texas? There's a couple in Florida. In Florida, that type of thing. Maybe it's worth it for us to get in touch with them or figure out, you're already there, you're already established. What are the ancillary businesses that now have come into that area to help you out, you know, to, to augment the business that you're doing? Because maybe we don't have those businesses now, and maybe we can attract them to it since you're coming here anyway. Something to think about. Good. Very good. Um, so our next persona is for brokers. Um, so this persona is more... So we, we want to contact businesses through the brokers. So we're not targeting... The brokers, we're using them as like a bridge in between us and the brokers. Um, so John is a commercial real estate broker in North Haven and is seeking a space for his client, ABC Steel Company. The company's main priority um, is a town with low utility co costs and they need a re reliable power supply for production. Um, they don't want to construct a building. They want to find a building that already suits their needs. Um, he's searching for a town um, with the ability to tap into a strong workforce from different areas with low cost, but isn't aware of which towns offer low cost and still have a reliable power supply. Mm -hmm. um, so our initiative link for the brokers will be email advertising, flyers, and direct contact, whether it's calling, emailing, um, and then our message, we want to tell them that we have util our, about our utility costs, workforce, rent costs, the ease of doing business in the town, and our regulations. Hey, Shay, I've heard, I've heard flyers mentioned a couple of times. Uh, and I'm, I'm wondering whether flyers to a guy my age and flyers to people your age are different. Are you just literally talking about eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper, or is there some other... Um, I think we meant like pamphlets because we we talk about it um, more in the implementation strategy, but um, it's pamphlets. But in this, for some reason, we wrote flyers, but we meant pamphlets. So so paper, not electronic. Yeah. So our email advertising is more electronic based, and then our flyer, or I mean, not our flyers, our pamphlets yeah. are um, paper based. So we wanted to do both. 
And that's actually not a bad, I, that's actually a really good idea because it gives something tangible for people to come back to. Emails can be easily lost, but the pamphlets are something that can stay on a desk and be there staring at a person. For yeah, a while. exactly. And vice versa, because sometimes flyers can, or pamphlets, I need to stop saying flyers, <laughs> can get like lost in the mail, like your junk mail, you're just throwing things around. Um, yeah. So if you wanted to go back to your email, you could do that too. So we are talking about some sort of a direct mail edition. Yes. Okay, interesting. Um, okay. And then, Jack, I know you have to go. Do you want to do your stuff for the strategy implementation first? Yeah, that'd actually be great. I'd appreciate okay. that. Um, so we're going to skip through the LinkedIn on the uh, strategy implementation. Uh, and we're going to go down to Facebook to start. Um, so Facebook has two initiatives basically in it. Uh, one, we want to start a Facebook page for Wallingford. Um, and uh, through this, we will do um, uh, a series of things like a content series of different types. Like we want to do tips and incentives for living and doing business in Wallingford. We want to do talent updates, business updates, and promote speaker series that we hope to implement. Um, but also there are large um, groups um, or forums for the citizens in Wallingford. We want to be active within those groups because we think that we will be able to direct people to like our page and follow the content that we produce. And in return, they would share that content as well. As citizens in the community, they want to see it grow. So they have a larger incentive to share the content to um, the people in their network. Um, also, in doing so, if we stay um, tapped in into the groups that are in Wallingford, we have a pulse on the quality of life in Wallingford. So if there are issues that arise in Wallingford, more than likely they're going to be talked about on the forum pages. And that gives us great insight to quickly address any issues that people may be having so that way we can better tailor our marketing and better tailor our town to um, be what people need. Um, so for Instagram, it's very similar. Um, however, there are different feels. So whereas Facebook is more information, this shows more of the aesthetic and more of the, um, uh, younger demographic as well. Um, so we would like to actually link the Instagram to the Facebook. So whenever we post on Instagram, that post will be then posted on Facebook as well. However, we don't think that the Facebook posts are as, um, uh, content worthy for Instagram or the same content that would be needed. And we also want to rely heavily on the story feature on Instagram because it can flood persons. We flood a person's feed. They're more than likely not going to follow us because they're going to get annoyed with us. But we don't want to post um, things like we're hoping to do a photo contest with the citizens in order to get a lot of photos out there um, that are high quality photos of, of Wallingford. And so this would be a great place great way to post them and we also think that this would be a great way to promote um again the speaker series and, and stuff like that jack when would the photo contest be running um so i believe that we would like to try to implement it next uh year starting next year um we think that it'd be a good seasonal thing. So each season we have like a photo contest and it kind of highlights like the, the seasons of Wallingford and kind of highlights, you know, the New England feel um, mm -hmm. uh, pretty well and kind of um, uh, ties all the pictures together. So you're creating a lot of good content out there. So John, if I could ask a question, the, um, the use of Instagram and Facebook in terms of uh, att attracting an audience what what audience are you trying to attract through the social media side? Right. So for the Instagram, definitely a younger demographic. Um, if we are able to attract uh, people to follow us on Instagram, they're going to get a lot of updates about um, <clears throat> the speaker series and a lot of updates yeah. uh, just about the town of Wallingford in general, like how it, you know the quality of life is and general activities in Wallingford. So if somebody is looking to move to Wallingford, and they're probably going to research the town a little bit. And if yeah. they pull up Instagram, they're going to get a good sense of the community and a good sense of what the town is like. And so this is more of an add on to um, immerse themselves into the community. And if they can't visit, then this is a good way to get them um, in the mindset of being there. So it's trying, it's, it's targeting people who would potentially live here versus uh, attracting a business here. 
Right. And then also for Facebook, um, you know, we can post job updates on that as well, because we yeah. feel like if somebody in Wallingford um, is following us on the page, we share a job and they know somebody that um, needs a job, they're probably going to share that post with that person. And yeah. so relying heavily on the network that already exists in Wallingford yeah. is uh, vital, I think, in, in reaching um, different people around the around the town. Yeah. Okay. I also no, that's... want to highlight. Sorry, I also want to highlight one of the focal points for the Instagram is promoting small businesses that are in Wallingford. So one of the things that we also want to attract is just news about what's happening with the small business promotional events that might be going on, or just the small businesses that exist in Wallingford. Bringing more attention to them using the Instagram could help drive people to their business, help bring them success in Wallingford. Successful small businesses in Wallingford will then bring other small businesses to want to come to Wallingford because they see yeah. the success of the small businesses we have. Yeah, that's a good point to bring up because we would like to implement uh, takeovers. So this is where the business would take over our um, uh, Instagram and they would promote their business and their content on our Instagram so that they can reach our followers as well. And that kind of highlights to other people and possibly other businesses that follow us um, about the um, opportunities and the um, good business uh, life that's happening in Wallingford. Yeah, at that, that point is exactly where I was hoping you were going to go with it. I think, you know, it's, it's a double-edged sword so, social media. Um, I live in town and there is on Facebook, if you haven't found it or checked it out, but check out the Wallingford community forum. There's a couple of, um, of Facebook groups that are, you know, kind of purely Wallingford and to have an EDC site, you know, or, or page would be would be good to help promote the businesses and help the businesses. I think the businesses would appreciate that. And somebody considering coming to Wallingford, if you have a strong social media presence that helps them, you know, because they're 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 going to hang a shingle, especially a small business, and if they've got a, a kind of a built-in, hey, uh, Wallingford's uh, EDC has a, a Facebook page and they help promote the business. That's that's great. Um, the double-edged sword of that, the dark side of that, is man, I tell you. Um, People get creamed. Um, there was a uh, a great restaurant in North Haven called Leon's. Uh, it was an old restaurant. It had been around in the New Haven area forever. Um, there was a um, an incident happened, and it hit social media, hit Facebook. It literally crushed the bill, the the business. You know, so you you will get um, the good and the bad of that. Where people, it's an open forum. And so people are going to talk and, and you're, you're going to get some things that you want. You're going to get some things that you don't want. So that's, that's the, maybe just the dark side of that to, to consider of how, how you approach it and what parameters you set for people to, uh, to, to communicate through it and so forth. I guess in moderate, we've got to have the resources here to moderate it. Um, but anyway, that's a, uh, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I, I don't go on the forum, but I've heard it gets really crazy. That's why I don't go on there. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, you know, being on the EDC, I, sometimes you want to say something, but I, I just, I don't want to draw that kind of yeah. attention. Well, I think that's part of the reason why the recommendation is to create a, a separate Facebook account so that we do have absolute control over the moderation of it and whatnot, as opposed to just the... yeah. Yeah. One. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Part of the reason of being in the forum would be to attract people to like our page and following, following our content directly. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we don't want to be flooding the forums with our content. We just want to be every once in a while, throw like a, a tip in or like an event in, and then hopefully people will be like, Oh, this is some good information. Well, I'm going to go ahead and like that page. Yeah. So we, we won't be allowing people to comment on the Facebook page that we create. Correct. We don't. We don't have to do that. We can. We can um, limit the um, comments. Okay. It seems to me that the focal point on this is to have someone run and monitor it. Yeah. I mean, you just don't yeah. set it up and then, and say that okay, now we're 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 up and running and leave it at that. I mean, you have to have somebody look at it on a constant basis. I'm I'm involved with a bank, and we started out very very slowly years ago on social media. But the most important thing was we had to have somebody who was on it and constantly watched it and looked for those comments that were disparaging and quite frankly not true and had to uh, just make sure that we address those comments because it can roll. One comment can be 10, ten bad comments, can be 100 bad comments if you let them go that way. Yeah. So it's important to watch that. They can take on a life of their own. Yep. Yes. 
And Patricia, to your point, um, I, I do uh, go on to those forums, and but I have never once responded, even when I because I'm afraid to start, <laughs> you know, afraid to start something. So, um, and I've seen things that are just flat out inaccurate. Yep. Uh, yeah. and very very hard to resist touching the keyboard when you see things that are just flat out inaccurate. And sometimes they're about you know businesses or business closings or different things um so you, you guys have got a little bit of work to do to convince us that we're going to establish a comfort level um in a, in a public forum um but hey the idea is, is wide open so you know jack and uh, and team you guys help us help us monitor um and or help yep. us establish i already have that down as one of the follow-up things that we're going to do is to set god guidelines for how to moderate the yeah. different social media accounts. Right. Yeah, at the end of the day, yeah. it may be the best way for us to promote the town. It just, uh, we, we have to set up the uh, the fence around it to make sure that we're doing it right. You know? Yeah. With a, with a mind towards resources. I know that, and I don't want to get into the resource part of it now, but everything is going to be resource driven at some point. So it's going to be how often, you know, messaging, frankly, I don't think we're going to struggle going up with messaging. We, we've got a lot of good stuff to sell. It's just a matter of uh, you know how frequent. The other thing that's going to my mind is that uh, I am not a, a regular Facebooker, frankly, but I do go on. Um, frankly, you know, when I sit down at the end of the day, I'll relax, I take out my iPad, and I'll, I'll just see who's talking about what. So almost mm -hmm. daily. Do I post things? Hardly ever. So mm -hmm. my, my wife calls me a Facebook stalker because I just go in and I look and see what's going on with everything else. Uh, because it helps, it helps find out you know, it gives me an idea of, you know, where, where the where the mindset is of a lot of different people. So I do find it helpful in that respect. But, you know, people friend a person. So the other thing I'm saying is, how do you establish and how do you build an audience? Uh, and, and who's who's building it? Is it a, is it a person? Um, is it, I don't think people are going to get excited about, you know, do you want to friend the Economic Development Commission? Uh, uh, um, that's probably not that likely, but um, anyway, we have to talk about that too. Um, so I also think we should mention we're, the page that we're making, it wouldn't be like a forum. It would be completely controlled by us. And then um, people can like and comment, but it's it's not a forum. So I feel like we would get less um, like hate and conversation because when they're commenting, they're talking directly to us because it's our post where I feel like in a forum, people kind of like feed off each other and it's not really directed at anybody or they're kind of just like talking in it. Um, so, but our page in order, you also wouldn't like friend people. Um, people would come to your page and like it. And then once they like your page, they see your content on their feed when they're just scrolling. Mm -hmm. um, so we were thinking in order to get an audience, we could post it in that forum just to attract people to the page. And then once they like the page, our job's like really done from there, then we would just start posting. Excellent. Yeah, yeah that, that, um, that forum would definitely have to be monitored. Not the one we create, but the Wallingford one, because they are very opinionated about the EDC and I've been attacked in meetings, so. Just putting it out there. Double edged swords. <laughs> yep. Um, so we can go back up to, are you done, Jack? You, okay. Um, we can go back up to the LinkedIn um, on the top. Um, so we separate it into two sections. So non paid advertising and paid advertising. Um, so for both, um, we found that we want to target um, a skilled workforce on LinkedIn while also targeting new businesses to locate in Wallingford. Um, so those are our two primary people we want to reach with our LinkedIn account. Um, so in order to attract these new businesses, um, we believe creating a page with a persona behind it, um, whether that's Tim Ryan or somebody else, um, would be beneficial in reaching out to potential companies we would want to move to Wallingford. Um, we said this because if we will, our plan is to build is to contact through two pages. So we would have one, the town of Wallingford, 
which could be mainly used to post about job opportunities, post about businesses, post about any like current articles, any um, media press that we're getting. So whether it's posting it ourselves or sharing it on the account, um, that's what we would be posting on the Wallingford account. Um, however, we believe that when we are contacting businesses, um, the page should have a persona behind it um, because we think it's more personal. Um, it's not as much as like if you got a message from the town of Longford about a business, it, we, we don't think it would be as um, successful as somebody who's reaching out to you. You know who you're talking to. Um, you know their, um, you know who they are. You know they're credible. So we wanted to do two separate ways of messaging people. Um, and then, um, like I said, we would post publish business articles, new businesses, business opportunities in Wallingford, just to increase Wallingford's online presence um, and increase users' knowledge about, Wall knowledge about Wallingford. And by doing this, we would create a company page or profile and the optimization works similar to SEO. So you can optimize your page using keywords. So whatever you put on your page, you're hoping people are searching that in the search engine and your page will come up. So we would want to rank high on LinkedIn. Um, and to do this, we would just write a descriptive overview of Wallingford included on our page and the account would be used to attract a new workforce by reaching out to graduating students or unemployed workers in surrounding areas about the opportunities that are available in Wallingford. Um, so the non-paid advertising just consists of making the page, um, which doesn't cost anything except for obviously time and labor. Um, and then for paid advertising. So LinkedIn has a sponsored in-mail feature um, that costs approximately 80 cents per send and allows you to talk, target your audience on LinkedIn based on job function, institution, university, field of study, degree type, skills, experiences, location, and more. Um, these were the ones that we felt were probably most beneficial to us. Um, and then it's worth noting that when college students received in sponsored mail messages, they're more likely to ignore them because it's less personalized. So when we all kind of decided when we see an in sponsored messages, it's kind of like, oh, like this was sent out to a bunch of people. It's not um, legitimate. And so we think that in order to test whether this tactic would be successful or not, we can start by manually sending out messages and see the success rate. Um, so we would just target um, people using those job function, institute, university, and message them and tell them about the job opportunities, tell them what they can do in the town of Wallingford. And then, um, um, sorry. Um, and then they also offered sponsored content, which we also think would be beneficial to us. So this is also you pick your target audience and the sponsored ad will appear on their feed. So we think that we could implement this when necessary. So meaning we're not going to have, we're not going to pay for an ad to be on people's feed every week, but rather when we have, um, when we have opportunities, when we have a big story, um, we can then pay to advertise it on LinkedIn. So we kind of said that the um, sponsored ads would be more of like do when necessary type of advertising. Um, so this would also include documents, articles, or announcements about the town of Wallingford, um, which allows us to be in direct content with contact with our audience. Um, and then we could use targeted ads to attract workforce or a business, which have which a different ad for whatever we're trying to target at the time. And then um, we could tell people, like if we were wanting to attract a new business, we could post about a new building that's open for a business or the benefits that they would get. Um, targeted ads on LinkedIn cost about $2 to $5 per click. Um, and the cost is based on performance. So like I said, we wouldn't be paying this um, weekly. We would be paying it when we thought was necessary. Um, 
And then it also, an, another form of paid advertisement that we thought we could use was in sponsored, sponsored in-mail messages after connecting with someone on LinkedIn. So once you connect with somebody on LinkedIn, it automatically sends them a message. So th we thought we could utilize this feature by sending a sponsored message to the connection. And then, so once we make the connection, we could send whether it's someone, whether it's a business or workforce, um, we could send them the opportunities that are available in Wallingford. And in order to measure our success, um, we can see how much engagement there is with the post, whether it's the amount of likes, shares, comments, and LinkedIn also has an insights available to, to measure the amount of clicks, impressions, how many people saw your ad, click through rates, um, average engagement and more. Um, so our main goal on LinkedIn is to boost Longford's online presence while being able to attract companies and a strong workforce. Um, and then just that our goal for all of the social media accounts is to integrate it so that everything connects and that everything is to our website. So we want to put, um, the link to our website within all of our social media like bios or descriptions so that when somebody sees our pages um, it will direct them to our website and we think that integrated marketing is the most like successful because it'll maximize the amount of users that will go through and click on the url um, and then hopefully learn more about the town of wallingford um, and then resources timeline for linkedin um, we think it's feasible to create a business profile on Wallingford um, within the first week of December, um, which is this week. Um, so we said if the page were built by December 5th, we could begin making connections, connections and posting on December 7th. Um, we would need a dedicated one to two people to make the LinkedIn account and interact with other LinkedIn users. Um, and then when it comes to posting, we said that hopefully every week we could at least post or share something um, and we want to stay active on the account. And then whether we can assess after like a month if we think we should be posting more or less on that account, um, depending on if we have enough content, if we need more content, um, stuff like that. Um, I can uh, I can I can give you uh, my two cents on the on the LinkedIn thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I use it uh, in our business here. Um, it's very effective. Um, I would I would caution you to uh, create um, a content calendar uh, so you have uh, thought way ahead of what your content's going to be because the worst thing you could do is set up an account and then on Monday morning, scratch your head, oh, what are we going to put on it this week? You know, so you, you build a content library, you build content topics, you build off of those topics, you have multiple uh, content pieces that uh, surround, uh, you use a lot of video. We've got some great video that you can pop on. People are lazy, they want to pop in and look at a video, see something quick. You could highlight a building that's available. You could highlight a manufacturing space that's available. A little video. I mean, that, that sort of stuff I think is going to be effective. Um, I do use sponsored content. Um, I target very specific industries and titles within those industries. So for, for, for EDC, if you have, uh, if you want to target an industry, um, you know, and Tim, you could probably offer up a, you know, what, what is a typical title? Who's a decision maker who you would maybe engage with? You could target an industry, specific company and specific titles within those uh, companies are, are who are the most likely person that you would engage with. Um, so your content shows up in their feeds. Um, but, uh, but as, as far as setting it up and if you, unless you have a lot of content, uh, to back it up, I, I think you'd, you'd struggle a, a little bit, you know, just food for thought. Cool. Well, I think that, that was a wonderfully comprehensive thing. I've gotten quite yeah. a few notes about next steps on this. Um, and I like that you guys really paid extra attention to the unpaid 
forms of marketing. So, so far with the Facebook, the Instagram, LinkedIn, because our goal is to do this on a very strict budget. And the idea of approaching the paid from an experimental standpoint of testing out the wires before we start going whole hog, that was the right mentality. So good job, you guys. Great. And nicely done, Jay. I, I, will, I will add to David's comments that uh, because of the limited budget, um, you know, some predictability factor um, is, is almost essential. So, you know, for us to have some model that says, you know, we pay on the number of click throughs, but I mean, that could be enormously successful. <laughs> we don't have the money to, to support it, you know, so you need to keep that in mind. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, very, very thorough. Thank you. So I think we jumped down to the bioscience caucus. Yes. Uh, so I am going to talk, uh, I think it's really important that we connect with the bioscience caucus uh, with direct contact, also BioCT. Uh, and so doing this just to better align ourselves with the caucus and BioCT in order to better attract STEM businesses and make sure that they know that Wallingford is here. Uh, the starting point for this would be to get in contact with the EDCs of towns that are already utilizing the resources that the Bioscience Caucus uh, provides. Uh, namely, Branford and New Haven have had contact with them recently in bringing businesses into their towns. Uh, BioCT is also headquartered in New Haven, and we think that talking to their EDC uh, might help us get in better direct contact with BioCT with some background from their EDC. Uh, so we think that uh, either Tim or someone else who is uh, directly talking with brokers uh, and working with uh, the buildings that we have available is probably the best person to make direct contact first because you know uh, the talking points better than any of us will and you know exactly what you're looking for and what you can do in the town. And so starting off by talking with the EDCs and then getting them to direct you to who to contact within the caucus uh, and within BioCT, and then to find out what we can do as a town to better uh, align ourselves with STEM businesses and attract them. Very good points. Under, understand that there is a competitive nature to this. So, you know, New Haven and Brantford are not gonna say, oh, sure, Wallingford, come on in, <laughs> because they want the businesses that, that we want as well. So, um, but there certainly is uh, is methodologies that they can get more involved with BioCT, no question. But yeah, I mean, even if, if uh, direct contact with the other towns doesn't work, uh, just finding the representatives who are most involved with the caucus and getting in contact with them uh, is the next step either way, either through the towns or not through the towns, uh, is figuring out who those representatives are, which representatives are most directly um, involved with Wallingford as well, like which are for our district, and then getting in contact with them, finding out what we can do as a town. Point taken, Brenna, and, and well made, thank you. Cool. Yeah. College partnerships and programs. That is still me. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so for this point is more looking at the younger workforce and trying to attract young skilled workforce into Wallingford, not necessarily to move here, but namely to work here. Uh, and we think that the best way to do this is to contact colleges in the nearby area. I have a list of a couple, Sacred Heart, Quinnipiac, uh, Southern Connecticut State, to name a few, uh, and to get in contact with their career departments uh, that way that Wallingford can offer connections with local businesses, make these career departments more knowledgeable about what is in Wallingford, um, as well as to get in contact and try to be part of their career fairs, send business representatives to their career fairs, uh, and hopefully act as a bridge between these colleges and the businesses in Wallingford. Um, so for points of contact, uh, obviously, colleges are kind of winding down right now uh, with the end of the semester. So we think that contact is probably best made with these career departments in late January, early February, just because that's when people will start getting more into the thinking about what's going on in the spring, connecting people. Um, and that way you can get into their uh, career fairs, 
and hopefully connect them with a bunch of information about Wallingford to get that younger workforce. Fair, although I will note that building the initial contacts with the schools now would be advantageous. So that way when it comes time for them to do their career affairs, one, they're contacting us, but two, we also are not building a relationship right then. Mm -hmm. Rather, it's something that we have ongoing, but. Okay. Yeah, otherwise, solid. Uh, mm -hmm. What about the job database? Okay, that's the last one that I have. So this is definitely the most resource heavy uh, initiative that we have thought of and we wrote down in this plan, uh, mm -hmm. mostly because it involves outsourcing the creation of a database website. Um, it's definitely a bit of a stretch, but we think it would be very advantageous to have a centralized location where all Wallingford jobs are posted, uh, if not directly by the businesses, pulling these postings from Indeed, Glassdoor, and other job posting sites, putting them into this database so that people who are looking for jobs in Connecticut can much more easily see what's available and happening in Wallingford. Uh, this would be shared through our social medias. This would be shared through the colleges uh, and would definitely help attract a younger workforce because I know personally, I find Indeed and Glassdoor very overwhelming having a centralized location where it's like, okay, all of these jobs are in this one location where I know I can work uh, would be very advantageous. Mm -hmm. uh, if we wanted to go ahead with this, this would definitely be something we start early, uh, starting by looking for companies to outsource to for the creation of the website, whether we already have companies that we have worked with or we're looking for new ones who might offer us better cost savings. Uh, and then giving them a list of what we want with the website we had a couple of thoughts, um, having options for people to join a mailing list, having the ability to search by different key words. So whether that's industry or job position, uh, and also just having the database separated into job levels. So you'd have internships, entry level, senior level positions in different sections on the website, just so it's a lot easier to find like what is actually worth applying to based on your skill level and where you are in your career. So one thing I will note is that at QU, Professor Kiku Jones teaches a project management class for CIS, and they are always looking for real world projects to work on. So we might be able to get this done through her class, which would mean that we could do it for basically free. That would be spectacular. <laughs> I think the class runs every spring. I'm not 100% sure, but maybe reaching out to Kiku Jones to find out if that is when she's running the class and if they would could fit this on as one of their projects. Yeah. I also just kind of thought of this, but if we didn't want to create a whole website, maybe we could look into something of just adding something onto our website, whether it's like a page. Um, it just wouldn't be like as, as, as in depth as the separate website would be. Um, because I don't think there would be a way to make it like a collaborative thing, but if we wanted like companies to reach out to us when they have a job posting, we could post it on there for them. Um, so maybe it would just be creating a separate tab on the website that we have hmm. for job openings. So Brenna, question, uh, you know, typically initiatives are solutions to problems, right? So, um, I guess in my mind and keep in mind, I haven't looked for a job in a long time so but the job boards that are out there and they are they are numerous um they don't have the search criteria that um that you're you're describing i mean so so what how do they but with the biggest most technologically savvy minds in the country allegedly or maybe even in the world running these things how is it that they fall short and how do they leave a gap that wallingford connecticut could possibly fill yeah, so I think the problem with the large job boards is namely that there's just so much on them. Uh, there's so many jobs available, obviously, uh, that it gets a little overwhelming at times. I know for myself, when I was looking at internships, I was trying to narrow it down to like just like within like uh, whatever number mile radius of where I live. And I was still getting job postings, whether they were boosted from advertising or they were just a missed posting um that were way out of my feasible commute range and so i think what this solves is just the overwhelming nature of sites like indeed and glassdoor 
it really narrows it down to exactly what you're looking for. You're looking for a job in Wallingford. Maybe you're looking at the surrounding area of Wallingford, but Wallingford is definitely within your commutable range. This just makes it a lot easier for them to find a job and know that it's located here and they're not searching for a lot of postings that they're looking for Wallingford, but they show up as being in Hartford anyways. I also think like, for example, Quinnipiac has like a job posting board where I think it's called QUCC um, and they encourage students to look at that before they look um, anywhere else. So it's kind of the same um, type of thing that we're talking about because I feel like Quinnipiac students will look at that because it's their community. They know it. They know these jobs are real. They know um, they're not trying to like give them any jobs that wouldn't be of value. So I think that if Wallingford were to do the same thing um, and made it known enough that this is there for your community, you want people to get jobs. Um, I think that people will tend to look at that and trust that more than they trust jobs like that are on Indeed and LinkedIn, um, not necessarily LinkedIn, but jobs that are on Indeed that sometimes you don't know if they're legit. You don't know if they're just like real. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like there's a sense of when you know where a job is posted, you know that the site's credible. Um, people will use it. Very valid point. That, uh, that mentality of getting lost within a, a site as well is why I think a separate site would be a, a good idea as opposed to adding to the one that's already there because it is easy to get lost in the Wallingford site and kind of end up in places that really you're not really doing anything mm -hmm. okay so next up we have the flyer slash pamphlet yes so um we think that the pamphlet is one of the main ways to attract businesses looking to relocate so we think that it's very important to keep it updated and personable so um, based on the pamphlet that we, we received, we think that um, the disc should definitely be kept, but we think that there should also be a QR code added to it so that people can kind of see the video um, in, in an easier way if access to a disc player isn't uh, as easily available. Hmm. Um, and we also think that um, the front page should highlight um, Wallingford and give it a more personable feel. Um, and also the picture of where Wallingford is on the map, we think that it should be a bit smaller um, so that we can add another picture that highlights um, the railroad and highway uh, access points showing how easy the commute is. Um, and we think that it should also highlight the hubcap program and bring more attention to it and the benefits that it can provide to companies. Um, and I just want to interject. Well, sorry. No, no. Uh, this is the flyer that we're talking about that we got. Uh, we're talking about the trifold one that you guys gave us. Fair. Yeah, um, this is something we, we probably want two versions of that. One is the condensed, super condensed one, and then one that spells things out more in depth. So the, the idea with the pamphlet, the, the trifold is something that pulls people in, and then one that is like, and here's everything that you need to know about coming in. And so this will tie into then Chandler's work with Tim about like, what's the process for moving your business in and um, tying it into the website and the information that there and whatnot. So um, just something to think about. And then for the email design, we think that the email should highlight the resources that Wallingford can, can provide, um, as well as opportunities in Wallingford for uh, location. Um, and we think it should look kind of like a monthly newsletter um, and have simple content that's similar to that in the pamphlet um, as long as well as um, a link to download the full pamphlet um, as well as a link to the website and uh, resources that may be necessary for this would be a list of emails or addresses of people to send the information to as well as money to update the pamphlet if it's outsourced or a person to work on it as well as the cost of printing. Um, and our timeline for the creation and the distribution of the pamphlet, uh, we think that we should gather our initial list of contacts b before the end of December, so that it's all ready to be sent out. Um, and the mock-up should be completed around the middle of December, 
which gives us enough time to ensure that it's fully prepared and um, has no mistakes. And the final design should be cleared and printed by the end of December so that it can begin to be sent out to brokers and businesses um, in the first half of January. And for the email, um, we think that the timeline should be to start researching how to design an email campaign. So what sites to use to help, uh, help design um, in the first two weeks of December. And then after researching the last two weeks um, can be used to put together the information to finalize the design and then begin sending out emails in early January, um, which will be sent out once a month around the same time each month to establish a day when people will begin to expect a monthly email. Cool. Let's do the direct contact with brokers. Sure. And then we think that um, along with uh, maintaining the relationships with brokers that we already have, um, reaching out to new brokers that don't already have a relationship with Wallingford. Um, and in doing so, we can offer them information about the town and show them why Wallingford is a great place to bring their clients to. Um, and in doing so, more businesses can be brought to Wallingford and brokers will hopefully have a new location to bring people to. Um, and the main resource that we can think of is Tim or somebody else who already has relationships with brokers or who can contact new brokers in the area. Um, and then our timeline for this would be to start contacting firms and broker contacts in early January to find new people um, that we can reach out to. And then we think that monthly or as needed check-ins with brokers and firms um, to update them on any new information would be both beneficial to them as well as us because um, they'll be learning the new information that they can relate to clients or possible clients and we can continue to establish trust with them um, in building their relationship with Wallingford. Hi, uh, hey, hey, this is Rob. Can I ask mm -hmm. a quick question? Sure. Uh, and Tim might be a little bit more prepared to answer this. Tim, uh, are there incentives we can offer as a town to the brokers? Uh, over, you know, it's a competitive environment. I'm sure they get commissions based on the units sold. But are there other incentives that we might be able to introduce that would um, incentivize them to um, or sway them or even bias them toward Wallingford versus other towns? It's a matter of it's a matter of funding, but I guess my, my first reaction would be, um, yeah, we've got great rapport with, with the brokerage community, and what brings us great rapport is the fact that we bring them the opportunities for, for deal, and a deal to them is income. Broker the brokerage community works 100% on commission, so we are we you know a broker's best friend is the person who is I, I call myself a matchmaker a lot. Right, I know a business or I know an opportunity. I'll, I'll uh, speak to a potential business and introduce them to the broker, and I step out of the way and let them do their thing. So, I think what what John is talking about uh, is you know just you know more reinforce and just constantly that that toma top top of mind awareness. Right, just just always have some dialogue going with the brokerage community that says we're here, we're here to help. Um, you know, they've got my cell number. They call me, believe me, <laughs> all the time. I don't. It's not a matter of more money. It's a matter of making the introductions and bring, bringing them the deals and helping facilitate the deal. And I, I will tell you that um, you know, when I go to these brokerage meetings, so there, you know, there are trade organizations uh, for brokers, and when I go to the brokers meetings. Um, I am the only economic developer in the room, which to this day blows me away. Why every economic developer in the state is not working with these brokers just is, is you know, is a shock to me. But I don't go out of my way at economic development meetings to mention that I go to broker meetings because I frankly don't want the rest of them come. <laughs> right? So it's one of those little, you know, secret pathways we've carved. So I think the secret, Rob, is... The best way to incent a broker is to stay in touch and make deals. I yes. have had, and I will say this, I will say this on this uh, this meeting, uh, but I've had brokers offer me a spiff on certain deals, and it's like, oh, oh, oh you can't do that. I, I can't take it. I, you you can't do that. It's a matter of I'm doing my job. When you guys facilitate a deal, it works for the broker. It works for the business. It works for Wallingford. Everybody wins, right? So. Long answer to your question. 
Awesome. Uh, let's see, trade show. Yeah, so for the trade show, we think that um, one of the most important parts in creating it is going to be getting it out there and making sure that people know about it. So we think that this can initially be done by reaching out to students through LinkedIn, as well as businesses, both um, small and large, um, as well as colleges. Um, so the resources needed would first be monetary funding to host the event, as well as a place that it could be uh, held at. Um, and then next, the point of contact would be needed for businesses, college, and brokers. Um, and lastly, the resources to promote the trade show on social media, as well as um, through advertised marketing on LinkedIn are needed. So whether that's content or funding. Um, and the timeline for this is subject to change with everything going on with COVID. Um, but if things are looking not, not terrible, uh, we should start contacting businesses for interest and attendance in February. And then promotion on social media and email listings should start in March and run into April. And the event should be scheduled to be hosted in late April if possible. Um, mm -hmm. And we chose late April because this is when college is still in session. So students in surrounding colleges would be able to attend. Cool. And do you want to speak to the drone video as well? Um, that's mine. Oh, okay. um, so for the drone video, so we think it would be beneficial for um, the town of Wallingford to post a drone video on all their social media platforms as well as the website um, just to showcase what the town has to offer. So Wallingford, I know Wallingford already has two videos on their website um, currently, but we think that if there was a way to combine these videos together, um, which would entail making a whole new video, um, kind of more updated, more um, just like mo we, our goal is to condense what you have on the website currently into one video. So it would be drone footage, whether that's hiring somebody or getting a Quinnipiac student to do it, which would probably, you would prefer getting a Quinnipiac student to do it. Um, so you could reach out to um, professors, um, students in the film, graphic design, communications majors, um, and see if anybody would want to do it. Um, we also thought it would be beneficial to have either like kind of like almost like a document documentary type a video where we could interview um, residents of Wallingford and they can tell their stories, their experiences, why they stay in Wallingford. And then you could also have the business side of it where you could interview a CEO and he could tell you why he stays in Wallingford, wh what benefits him by staying in Wallingford and kind of how the town of Wallingford works with him um, to help their company grow or succeed. And like I said, we would need somebody with the skills and necessary equipment to create the video for the town of Longford. Um, we would need somebody with a drone or a camera to interview, well, drone and a camera to interview our respondents. And um, if we wanted to compensate the person for their work, we would need money. And then um, we we in order for people to apply to it so if we were to reach out for two quinnipiac students um we could create some type of google forms where they could apply to it um submit what they've done submit like a portfolio and we could look over it and pick the best applicant um and then for time wise we think that once all the students are back on campus in the spring we should take the drone video as soon as possible to allow for editing and we could post the social media, the video onto social media accounts. Cool. Very good, Jay. So, just um, one little back uh, drop on the on the videos. The way that they were formulated and put together, um, they were done in pieces, so that because you see on the business one, we highlight a lot of different businesses, and uh, well, one of the highlights is edible arrangements. All right, so. When Edible Arrangements decided to leave Wallingford and go to Atlanta, Georgia, we had it rather than redo the entire video, um, the person who did the video was able to go in and take the Edible Arrangements segment out and then tie the rest of it back together. And that was one of our objectives so that we don't continually have to redo the videos. 
Uh, so just keep that in mind. It's just anecdotal um, as opposed to one flowing video. I, have, I think someone earlier in the previous meeting said, you know, they, they seem a little bit choppy sometimes. Well, maybe that's why they're a little choppy is because this is a lot of, you know, individual snippets that, you know, technologically got sewn together. But with that in mind, you know, we, we, have, we want the opportunity to update it and insert a new business when we, you know, when Proton Beep Therapy Center comes in, we're going to insert them into a video somehow, right? So rather than redo the whole thing. Just yeah, I also think um, if we were to like post the drone video, like the drone video is more for um, to post so people can like share it because residents of Wallingford will be like, oh, this is such a pretty video. We're proud of our town. We're going to share it. It was more for that. And then um, I took a look at like the videos on the website and you kind of have a little bit of drone footage in there, it looked like. Um, so if we were to just kind of update that with the drone footage video that we would take in the spring, maybe we could do just that instead. Um, and then maybe add clips to that video that you have of um, interviewing people. Cool. So I think that is the last of the recommendations. So I have a ton of notes now of like next steps and things to do because you guys were wonderfully comprehensive. So thank you guys for doing such a great job with that, making it so easy for me to be like, okay, here's next step and here's a secondary next step and whatnot. That was awesome. So to the next meeting, because I, I think these next reports that are coming up have got a lot of meat to them, not that the previous ones didn't. But uh, yeah. I, I think that I think it will take us another hour to go through these to do it right. And I don't think we have the time for that. So why don't we set these reports, this process part into the ne into a next meeting? It just depends on timing for everybody. Yeah. And it makes sense. Yeah, so how about this? I'll make this as a proposal. Um, for the website, we'll read it over and give, generate a, a list of comments and our initial thoughts. So Samantha and Callum, you guys can start acting on that because I think when I glanced through it this past weekend, there were some things that are like, that you could start moving on right now. And rather we, than- um, We actually have the full design for the landing page completed. Uh, the report didn't reflect the actual work that we had done. We've got a link that we oh. can share that'll show you a live prototype. Well then, so. how about this? Let's do, Do you, can you do like a condensed version of your overall tomorrow. report out? Because I think that this is really important and I would like us to be able to move with this. I'm available. And then Morning. Chandler, for your section, we'll push it off two weeks because revising the process is a ongoing thing. <laughs> and so we may not be able to make initial steps on this, but I also want to be able to give you feedback. And especially because yours, I think is going to require some more thought on my part to give you educated response. I apologize, Mark and I were having a side conversation because I think we've got such fabulous momentum that waiting two weeks is, is, is not a good idea. We're actually talking about tomorrow morning. It is what what are people's availability to reconvene tomorrow morning and and listen to the final two reports and then really uh, I think you know I've I graphed some things out here in terms of you know targets and um, you know what we're going to use for targets I mean we have to start assigning things so um, what are what's what are people's availability for tomorrow morning Let's start with that eight a.m. so. Like I have class all day. Yeah, Say that again, Sam. I have class all day tomorrow, starting at eight a.m. So it's. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a meeting tomorrow morning as well. Um, do you, did you want me to give a shortened uh, version yeah. of our so, report out right now and show you the work that we've done so we can? Yeah. So if we, if we can do Callum and Sam today, and then Chandler, we can do tomorrow morning, and that way. Uh, we have all the things that we need. I can generate then the list of to-do tasks and whatnot off of that. So we'll do that. And then tomorrow morning, Chandler, are you available tomorrow morning? 
Yes, I am. Okay. How about we set a meeting for 8 a.m. tomorrow morning? So anyone who is interested. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I just I just don't want to rush through it. If, yeah. if Callum right. feels he wants to just present it, that's fine. I just don't want to rush through it. Yeah. On him, you know what I'm saying? I don't care. Go for it, Callum. Cool. Um, so I'm going to start off with doing a recap of the audit we did on the existing landing page. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at the landing page that you see when you click on businesses. And so this is where we did research on the analytics and we saw that there was actually a 72% drop off of people that visited this page, which means that 72% of the traffic to the business section of the website dropped off and exited the website after visiting this page. And so there's a couple of different problems that we, uh, we discovered when doing an audit. And as a landing page, this website is missing a lot of important information and doesn't answer a lot of the questions that someone might have when they're looking through uh, the economic development pages. And so especially given that we're losing a lot of people that are clicking through this page, I think it's pretty safe to say that uh, it would be helpful to provide a better user experience. Um, and then also, I don't think it actually has a lot of the information that um, are some one for its strongest talking points. Like we don't have any of the uh, statistics apart from just talking about the most reliable electric service. There's no real standout information and things kind of get lost. Uh, and this is like Patricia was talking about pages that um, make you feel like you're kind of lost in the website. And I think this is, uh, this is one of them. And so we wanted to focus on creating a better landing page that served as more of a, uh, a marketing page and a representation of all the other information that's hidden behind the tabs that most people aren't ever getting to. So let me switch. Hey, Callum. Yep. And the rest of the committee. Can I ask for just a two minute break? <laughs> All right. I don't want to miss any of this, but I've got a, I got, I need no, a minute. Okay. Can we just pause for two minutes? Good. All right. Yep. Okay. Chandler, if you need to go to class, by all means. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Bye, everyone. So well, Tim is up for the rest of you guys, like holy cow, the the concreteness of your recommendations was really awesome. Um, we have enough work, I think, for multiple <laughs> teams to go forward with um, just off of what you guys have generated, which is absolutely awesome. So I've tried to break it down into first steps that we need to do like now and secondary steps, things that we can push off a little bit or whatnot. And still, it looks like a lot. So, um, hey, that's spectacular. That means that we get to try our best to do everything and you guys have plenty of work going forward. But to that note, three of you still have not sent me your Venmo information. So apparently you want to do this purely on a volunteer basis and would like me to keep your money, which I am totally fine with. But if you, if you would actually like to get paid, please make sure that you do send me your Venmo information. <laughs> Wait, was that one of the people? Because I'm pretty sure I sent it over um, a couple of days If you ago. have not received a Venmo payment from me, then I did not receive your Venmo information. Okay. Because I, I think I sent it, I think it was three days ago. So I'll, I'll just resend the email. Cool, if you could please, because yes, for sir. some reason that never came through. Sure. Otherwise I totally would have paid you. And Callum, you are also one of those people <laughs> that apparently for a business owner, you <laughs> have a very interesting way of doing your payments. I got your Venmo, so. Oh, you did? Oh. I did. Then <laughs> never mind. You must have got my Venmo so hot. <laughs> yeah. Then wait, who was one of the other people? I don't know, I'm still waiting for like two other people, but. Otherwise, everything should be good. I've been trying to send them out as fast as I've got to them. I mean, I'll, I'll send it again if you want to send it No, I'm sorry. I don't want to pay you out of my own personal funds at this point. <laughs> I just, I just like, resent the email. Okay, cool. And 
I did just get it. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Cool. Calum, go ahead and take so, over. Yeah. I so we just did the a recap, just looking at um, why the existing landing page isn't working very well, and it's it's kind of ineffective as a landing page, um, just given by the the high drop off number, and so we're focusing on creating a better landing page that serves to represent all of the information that's hidden behind the tabs that you might never get to if you simply saw that page and um, didn't bother to dig any further. So this is the prototype that we've, can't, we've come up with that um, is the revised landing page. And we think serves as a better representation of, of all the information as well as being more effective at convincing people to dig further. Tell them, I think you're showing us the same page. I'm not. Uh, so uh, this no, is, no, 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 no. yeah, they are different. So the, so to start off with, um, we have the video that was hidden way, way beneath the fold. And oh. so as on the existing landing page, you have to scroll almost like three, um, three times down before you'd ever see it. And so, uh, we're starting off with the, the video because I think there's a lot of good information and it's something that's extremely visceral and easy to um, consume. But then we have different representations of the other tabs. Um, to start off with, we have the uh, location tab, which, so th this actually just links to the Y Wallingford page, but location was the strongest factor that we um, uncovered for businesses that were looking to relocate. And so we wanted to emphasize that among other factors as something that you might want to, might be incentivized to dig further. And then this is gonna help you, this is gonna help us get people to uh, learn more about our other strengths. But um, we've also got at a glance numbers. So they're extremely easy to understand uh, statistics that I think actually speak to people rather than having kind of um, anecdotal information hidden in the copy that talks about cheaper electric rates. You can see very clearly, you can expect to save up to 50% electric costs, which for a business owner that understands their bottom line, that speaks to real um, monetary savings. Uh, in addition to savings, we have, we also identified incentive programs being one of the other stronger factors that businesses considered one looking to relocate. And so um, this is also one of the other tabs that a lot of people were not ever getting to in the in the natural flow of a user that visited the website. Uh, next, we have our success stories, which are our social proof. And so there's, there's actually a lot of, Samantha was telling me about um, one of the other business owners that she interviewed from um, a migrant that we wanted to interview as well. And having social proof is one of the strongest forms of uh, being able to provide credibility. And social proof is also on on the internet is regarded as people actually consider social proof on websites or on uh, Google reviews just as strongly as they would consider in person recommendations. And so they're extremely important, especially when it comes to building um, an effective and convincing story for why people might want to relocate. The next section, let's, which is also the last new section that we're adding to this page, is the FAQ, which um, is extremely helpful when it comes to identifying commonly asked questions, but also SEO. And if people are looking through questions in the area for um, things related to business relocation, it's gonna help us uh, show up as a search result. And so these questions were taken from some of the most commonly asked questions from other town FAQs. And then we refined them to things that we thought were more concise. So uh, the next two sections, the contact and then the helpful links are also things that are on the existing landing page, but um, we're not being used quite as much. But as far as a contact, the uh, or the contact is essentially a call to action. And so that's something that we have um, lower after when it might be more natural in the, in, a, um, in the progression of a user flow to want to follow up after consuming all the, all the other information. 
So do you guys have any questions before we talk about? Do you uh, expand out one of the the FAQ questions? Just well, so we, we don't do have, we don't have. Oh, you don't have uh, content there? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's where I will chime in. Um, when it comes to the, um, the FAQ and the, um, Sorry, everybody. This week, anybody else. So. Your computer's lagging. <laughs> <laughs> Samantha speaking. Yeah, All right, when it comes to, so uh, my next steps are the, the interviews and the FAQ. Oh, and that is gonna involve some back and forth with um, the actual Wallingford team to make sure that we get the answers to these questions right. Mm -hmm. And um, my, my plan today after this meeting is to actually reach out to my existing contacts from the mm -hmm. interviews that we've had before. Um, but I'm also definitely open and willing to reach out to any other new businesses um, that have some good success stories that exist in Wallingford. I would just need their contact information. I would ask that Samantha, before you reach out to anybody, uh, let's you and I have a conversation so that we can, I mean, I see, I see three, you know, it looks like there's, there's room for three. Is that the ideal number? And if it is, yeah. we have yeah. a lot. From so the three, people that three, I have we can actually have more than three, but we thought that three is a is a strong minimum number to hit. Um, we don't want, if you have less than that, it's something that you run the risk of the section of the website looking a little bit barren. Um, and we just want to be able to say that there's lots of businesses that have successfully relocated and seen a lot of uh, growth since relocating. And one of the, I definitely wanted to talk to Gary from Atlas Filter because from our initial interview, he hit on a lot of the same points that we were trying to emphasize in our messaging strategy. Right. So let's just talk. Before you reach out to any other businesses, yeah. let's have a conversation. Yeah. Well, so other next steps too, um, which are questions for you guys. How would we actually go about implementing this in the, in the process? Uh, I don't know if this is something where we would be able to send over the design to the agency or um, how have you? That was exactly my the, next question is yeah. how do we get this actually? One, first, make sure that Tim, you and the committee approve it, but two, then get it actually implemented. Right. So um, first off, I like it. I like it a lot. It's it's um, it's very it's thoughtful. It, it's laid out in a friendly way. Um, some of the, the data on here we have to amend, correct? Um, so we'll just have to go through. So we have to go through a process to make sure the information is is in fact accurate. Uh, for example, the fifty percent electric cost is not accurate, but so we'll go through that. Um, so we have to edit, and at the same time, I, I should find out what the process is to, to make the changes. So um, I'll, I'll leave that ball in my court, I guess. Cool. So this whole, this whole prototype is something that I can actually uh, give you a link so you can see this online too um, and make comments on the, on the actual page as well so that I can implement that in the, in the changes. But as far as if if the page is is approved by the committee after any information is amended, what are the next steps to making this implemented on the live site? And that's what I'll that's what I'll uh, find out, Callum. Um, I'd, I'd like to hear from other committee members on their take on this redesign. Patricia, you've got a pension for websites. Uh, thoughts? I like I like the, the redesign. Um, I like it a lot. Um, I, I think it is very well thought out. Um, it does you get there. You go to where you have to go. You get the information you want. You're not going to get lost or go down a rabbit hole. Um, so I do I do like that a lot. Um, getting the company to put it to put it up is an issue. The search engine optimization for all the work you put into it is a concern because that's separate. They don't do that. Um, but hopefully the way, well, the way you've designed it will create that um, 
will attract um, people to the site, bring people to the site. Because that's, that's always been a concern of mine, is how many people actually visit the site. Yeah, I was going to ask, what steps have you guys taken to help optimize SEO on this? So as far as, as so, as far as SEO goes, the existing landing page um, actually isn't doing a whole lot when it comes to SEO. Uh, I mean, it doesn't have, for best practices, you want to have uh, like a minimum of 500 characters and ideally around 2,000 characters per page. And we're, we're absolutely nowhere near that. Uh, on top of that also, a huge part of it is, is creating a good user experience. And if you're not able to find what you're looking for in the first place, you're not it's not helpful and it's not helping people find what they're looking for. And that's also just like on the, on the current landing page, the only real link for people to progress and learning more about the economic development is that one link, which takes you to Y Wallingford. But apart from that, there's, um, there's no real natural progression or follow up apart from the, the contact info in the email. And so, uh, this is going to help us provide answers to commonly asked questions, which is a, a huge, like a huge part of SEO is making something that's really helpful and is going to help answer questions. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's something that the, um, the FAQ is doing. And then the FAQ, apart from also providing additional info, which is going to help us rank for commonly asked questions that people that are looking to relocate might be having. It's also going to help us, um, I mean, it's literally going to help us rank for those questions because we're, we have those questions listed on the site uh, as well as the answers. So uh, just to kind of summarize, I mean, it's going to help us in terms of the, the amount of content, the amount of like valuable content that's on the website. It's also going to help us in providing a better user experience to people that visit the landing page. Um, I think that the actual effectiveness of this being a, a landing page that can convert people and make them want to follow up or uh, continue through learning more and discovering more about Wallingford. I think it's going to be a lot more effective. Um, and then also lastly, we have, we have essentially keywords built into the and queries built into the content through the FAQ. And then uh, so it's going to help in a number of different ways, but um, first and foremost, I think, is the user experience component. Awesome. Sam, it seemed like you were going to say something early on. I just wanted to see, did all the points get raised that you wanted to? Uh, yeah, I believe so. But I think something that I just want to come back to is that the reason we are looking to revamp the landing page is for marketing purposes so that when we do end up doing outreach from different platforms, it's so that we can actually um, qualify leads based on the information that we're providing. Totally makes sense. So could I ask for you guys, could you either turn it, turn the page into a PDF or otherwise share the page so that way Tim and the committee can review it and give you guys more detailed feedback? Yeah, yeah, what I'll do is I'll send you guys the link so you can see it on a browser and then uh, that also, the way this is built with um, Adobe XD, it also gives you the ability to leave comments on the on the live browser version. So we can save everything in one place and have that all um, be directly related to the content. Nice. So it seems like for this, uh, there's going to be a lot of needing either feedback from other people and Tim is going to be your main point of contact for making sure that you get the, the interview people, uh, make sure that you have the content for the fact, the FAQs and uh, so on. So awesome job of building all of this out. And uh, yes, we'll try to get you guys feedback as fast as possible so we can move forward with getting that implemented. Question for Samantha. So Sam, is, is what you're saying, uh, you know, other, um, other memes, Facebook, Instagram, we, you know, uh, LinkedIn, uh, that are going to drive people to the website. And so was your point that we're going to be able to determine how many people are coming from those other, um, you know, other initiatives that are being driven to the website? We'll be able to tell source? 
Uh, yeah, so let's take LinkedIn, for example. If we were to develop an outreach campaign where a Wallingford representative reaches out to potential new businesses or, or um, people looking to start a new business and don't know where to go, um, if we reach out to them via any of those platforms, but specifically LinkedIn, um, there are traceable links. There are ways that you can trace where, uh, where the traffic is coming from to that landing page. But the main point I was trying to make is that the reason we want to um, make these changes to the existing landing pages because even if we were to do that outreach right now, they probably would drop off the page right away because the information there is not compelling enough to their decision making process. I agree. It's your seventy-two percent you're talking about. Yeah, Amanda wow. and Gallum. Do we know when people click on that uh, EDC page, do we know which page they clicked on previous and which page they clicked on afterwards? Do we have that link? Uh, yeah. we, we have the links to where they're clicking afterwards. I mean, we have the capability to find all of that okay. information, but for the most part, uh, the number one, um, I actually have it on my laptop screen right the, now. The, the company should also provide how long they're staying on each on each page and where they're moving around and everything like yeah. that. Yeah, we have the Google Analytics too. Yeah. So I, the, the, we, we can measure where we are now, which you've done, and we'll be able to measure successes and changes afterwards, which is an important criteria. So, so Mike, uh, just on the website, um, I have to determine how we make the changes, not only physically, uh, but it's the interaction between you know your concepts and the vendor that we use to uh, you know, operate the site. Uh, we'll, once once we go through um, edit, editing facts and data, we'll, have to, we'll get committee approval. I do have to take it to the mayor because we're changing the website, which is uh, obviously the town's uh, messaging tool. We'll talk, Sam, you and I will talk about uh, company testimonials. We'll get three testimonials, but we will hand select based on some criteria that you had mentioned earlier. I think it was, maybe it was Callum that says, are, are we looking specifically for companies who have moved into Wallingford, or are we looking for companies as well? And it could be a mix, and it could be a mix of people who have successfully operated here for, you know, a generation or better. Who knows? So we'll make that determination, um, and then the rest is is measuring. And part of the justification for the redesign um, is the fact that um, we we will we are optimizing this website. Uh, using uh, search words, correct? That correct. Okay. Structure so, and search words. So my my other question is, you know, in a, such a mobile society, uh, how how mobile friendly is is your your design? Because frankly, I, I think if not now, you guys have done much better than I. But if not now, as we go forward, every everything is going to be, you know using your phone. So I, I go on some websites that were great. I go on some that are just not mobily optimized, mobily friendly at all. So talk to me about the mobile and, you know, applications. How so, uh, mobily friendly is it? Well, so this is a, this is a prototype. This isn't coded by any means. This is just the design, but as far as making it responsive, um, all of the components on the landing page are, fairly standard when it comes to web design. There's nothing too, you know, revolutionary or, or experimental. And so it should be extremely easy to just make sections that are horizontal into uh, vertical sections. And so that's that's something that, um, you know, I can design a mobile version so that the agency has a, uh, a reference to use. And so they're not actually doing any of the design work or uh, it, it should also be pretty easy to just make a compressed version that's vertical based on the horizontal components. Do you know what they're coding in? I mean, are you just going to do straight up the HTML or are they, you know? Well, I don't know what their process is. And so I, you know, I can, I could give them straight up HTML and CSS, but. Oh, uh, what you create. Oh, I froze. Excuse me? Uh, so I could give them, I could give them okay. HTML and CSS, but um, I don't know how they're, I mean, I, when I was doing research into how the site was built, it does look like they are, they are hard coding it. So I imagine that they have their own system for doing that, um, which is, okay. 
like for example, all of the content, if you can see there's the, there's the left-hand tab with all of the side links, mm -hmm. and then there's a separate uh, main container for all the content. Yeah. And so uh, it would have to be, I would, the way the content would have to be provided to them is kind of tricky because it would have to fit within that one container, which I don't mm -hmm. know how it's, I don't know how it's structured. Okay. Back inside. So Callum, are you going to just email me a PDF of that page? He's going to send you the link. Yeah. The link to it. You'll be able to see it on, you guys are storing it on Callum's uh, server. Is that, where, is that where it is? It's so it, I made the prototype with Adobe XD. And so they have a really nice uh, share function. So you can just share a link. And then that, that also has the ability to leave comments on different sections of the, of the prototype. Okay. So um, you just guys, you guys just get a live link. You can leave comments, and then um, when we make changes, changes, I can just update the link and revise the the prototype um, based on the feedback. Yeah, Tim, you can take a screenshot, screenshot of it if you needed to. Oh, okay. Um, and then copy the screenshot. If you're looking to show somebody a PDF of it. Okay. Well, it is nine fifty-five, so. Two hours worth of content. <laughs> we still haven't gotten to Chandler's component, but this is absolutely awesome. Before we head out, are there any other questions from the committee? And in, in 2013, I created Welcome to Wallingford. If you get a chance, check it out. But it's it's the combination of a for, it was the idea of a forum and tracking businesses, both of them together. So, so just is like that a website or? Yeah, is, but I haven't touched it in 2013, probably since 2015 or 2014. So it's something that's just sat there for a long time that I just never took down. But it's basically what you guys were talking about, trying to combine the idea into one so, without a lot of the stuff that's out now. I'm fine with that. I just, you have to set up the date. Is it tomorrow or is it not? Tomorrow? You know, I'm wide open. Yeah. I'll just mention that I'm every week, every time I see you young folks present this material and you're, I'm just overwhelmed at the, uh, at the creativity and the ingenuity and the professionalism of your presentation. So kudos to all of you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's an understatement at this point. <laughs> yeah. No, you guys have done a great job. You really have. For sure. So David, I, I've got, um, Let's let's talk about a meeting, a next meeting date. All right. So typically we've been doing every two weeks, but can we? I think now that Callum and Sam have done their presentation, uh, I will tell you that Chandler and I have met with a um, uh, a vendor that uh, yep. goes through process improvement, and we are setting up in the process setting up a demo. We that we did a discovery call this past week, we're setting up a demo, a product demo. So uh, that initiative is moving forward. Um, I'm going to suggest, if it, if it pleases everyone, that instead of waiting two weeks, that we meet next Monday so that we can keep um, momentum here. It's, mm -hmm. uh, how would everybody feel about that? Next Monday would be the, six, no, the 7th? Yes. Yeah. yeah. 7th, 8 o'clock. Jay's got a thumb up. Sam's nodding. Callum, you're yeah, good. Yeah, I think that right. works. I think the one thing to keep in mind, uh, I don't, I know for me it's not an issue, but I don't know about everyone else. Uh, next week for us is finals week. I don't know if anyone has heavy finals, but that might impact the amount of work we're able to do this coming week. Oh, okay. Good point. <laughs> we are not aware of, so. Um, so everybody, oh, I saw a thumbs up for everybody, but did that change anybody's mind? Or Brian, are you, are you that problem for you? It's not a problem for me. I just want to bring it up in the amount of work we're able to get through for next week. Yeah. Um, it, the nope. meeting time isn't a problem. It's just the amount that we can feasibly produce for you. Yeah. It's tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow an issue. Yes, it is. For, for a it couple is. of the kids, it is. Okay. And, and and Brianna, you have your priorities in order for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think what we'll do, let's meet next week because what that we can do then is since next week will be finals, hopefully you guys will start to have some some freedom and whatnot, but then we can set a marching order for going forward all through the 
holiday season because otherwise the next meeting would be pretty much smack dab on top of the the Christmas week and whatnot. And so if we can give you guys enough work to be able to go forward um, all the way until January, that would be spectacular. So that way you guys can also spend time with family and friends, but still have a way to do touch points or maybe like one-on-one -on -one or small group meetings with the uh, with the committee. So in an, in an effort to try to focus um, or let's say aim, all right, the focus is in fact, you got, you got, again, very impressive. So let's, let's start to take and refine our aim. And I think for everybody's benefit. So we've talked about a workforce target. We've talked about business targets. And I, I, I'm, I'm saying this, but this is a committee decision. So committee members, please chime in. My preference would be to say, all right, let's focus on business. That starts taking us down a specific path. My next focus would say, what type of business? I would office dwellers, <laughs> people, all right, as opposed to manufacturing and retail, you know, the types of businesses that would, would occupy office spaces, which is our, our biggest opportunity. So as we're talking about email campaigns, Facebook, Instagram, uh, brokers, pamphlets, direct, uh, direct mail, site selectors, those are all things that were within that target audience for, for potential attracting businesses for office use. So mm -hmm. to me, it seems like we, we've, got, we've got this whole landscape of great opportunity. In order to get started, we have to take, we have to whittle this thing down to some you know, direct path. That would, be, that would be my preference because I think it's the biggest need we have at this point. Um, and then simultaneously making the improvements to the website. I think those are the two biggest focuses right now. So, so I leave that open for brief conversation to, uh, and, and I, I'm hoping that David and, and uh, uh, MQ, that you guys, that helps you guys focus a little bit. Yeah. As opposed to going out after workforce at this point, let's just focus on businesses, brokers, uh, and specifically the types of businesses that uh, would occupy, typically occupy offices, which would be certainly the biosphere, um, but you know, engineering so, firms, et cetera. So let me offer a possibility. Would, for the committee, would it be possible to meet first thing tomorrow morning, maybe at eight o'clock tomorrow morning? So that way you guys have time to think it through, look over everything. And what I will do is, since I have my list of all the different tasks, I can flag which ones then I will make a recommendation of the team continue forward with over the next time period. So that way they focus on that specific target. But that way too, if you guys say, hey, actually we want to also bring in or we should redirect, we can adjust and modify that. And then I can send out an mm -hmm. email to the team to say, here's the David, are you talking about the committee as well, David, or just the team? Just the team. Just, the, no, just the committee. So be meeting with the committee tomorrow, so that way we could make sure that the team is on the right, like giving the team the right next steps. And then I can send an email right. to the team saying, here's what the committee said in instruction. Here's the next steps that we would like to see going forward. And Okay, so just us, the EGC. Yes. Okay, I'm available at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, and that would be for about an hour? As, a, as am I. Okay. okay. For about All an right. hour. Well, I was thinking an hour tomorrow morning. Okay, fine by me. Yeah. Okay, me too. Cool. David, will you send out the... Uh... I will send out an invitation and a Zoom. Yep. Send uh, out Zoom link for Tuesday, I think, tonight. Perfect, because I have a meeting tomorrow morning at 9.15, so that'll be, that'll fit beautifully into that. Um, okay. Does the committee have any way to, uh, Tim and Mark, uh, can, is there any way we can meet now for just, even if it's 10 minutes? Sure, after this is over, just yeah, yeah. Sam, yeah. We... No problem. Yes. Okay. You, you have a link, Mark? Well, you guys can just stay on the oh, okay. call. Yeah, we all okay. said it, so. Stay yeah, on the Okay, so for the team, you guys have done incredible work. Thank you, you five, for staying on um, the entire time and 
giving so many awesome recommendations. And uh, yeah, expect an email in the next couple of days, probably tomorrow, <laughs> with a ton of information of like, here's all the, the next steps because you guys gave so many. So I'm going to try to pare it down <laughs> because otherwise um, you guys will not have time to do any work whatsoever, period, um, other than working on this. Did we establish, I'm sorry, did we establish when our next entire group meeting is? Next entire group meeting will be next week, Monday. Next Monday? Okay. Ronnie, you okay with that? Yeah, that works totally fine. Okay. Awesome job, folks. Very, very nicely done. Okay. Yep. Meet Fantastic. Stay on. Who wants to stay on? Good luck with finals. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. There. Yeah. Good luck with finals, guys. Thank you, everyone. Love, guys. Did you guys need me around too, or should, or did you guys just want to talk as a committee? Um, I think just as a committee. That's a committee. Yes, please. Okay. Thanks. Cool. David, that's a that's a Thank fascinating that's, that's a fascinating wall art you have there. I'm looking at it. it's like the uh, current the modern version of the lava lamp. Yes. Take your notes. it is banana leaf oh. canvas. It it is a really nice. Uh, it's so, really nice. It's interactive. You can change the colors, and if you touch the panels, they will change too. So, a lot of fun. Yeah. But I have now made Patricia the host. So, Patricia, you have full control over the meeting. Have Thank a wonderful time, and I'll talk to you guys first thing tomorrow morning. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. So, what do you? Here's just an Patricia. overview of all the work that they've done so far if we were to pay a company and i'm just guessing and i may be lowballing it probably we'd probably be looking at thirty forty thousand dollars maybe for what Absolutely. for the analysis everything that they've done so far is, is quite a bit yeah and that's a guess that's a guess because i haven't yeah. been in the, you know i haven't been you know charging for the business and being in the business for quite a while but that wouldn't have come cheap especially with wallingford being attached to that bill to that check that they would have expected us to write out, it would have been extremely expensive. So I, I guess my only my only advice you guys can take is that is it wouldn't it wouldn't be advisable to um, to uh, try to find the absolute utter uh, you know dirt cheapest way out at this point because what they're giving us the advice that they're giving us is worth the money to put the money into. I And it's also, I'm not also saying, let's go all out and you know sell the farm to do this, but I, I do think money will have to be put into this. Um, they're seeing, you know, they're seeing a lot of stuff and they're working on it. They haven't gone into, they've gone into the back end, but to the degree of research in which I figured they would have already realized, you know, that we get 200 hits a month, which is my next question to them would be at our next meeting is, as measuring our success, how many hits do they expect to hit by when? How often How often will they be measuring this? Um, they have, we now currently have the capability to see what pages people are going to, how long they're sitting on that page, what links they're hitting, all of that we have, we have access to. Um, and they're obviously not going anywhere for very long at all. But once they start to take off with this, we will see their success in the back end. The, the, they're called stat reports every month so we'll be able to measure what they're doing but it's not going to be we can't do it on the on the cheap i guess i can I could say no patricia great comments as always um what i what i really like about the direction that we're moving in is as opposed to building a website and then hoping people go where we're reaching out and we will be reaching out to communities businesses brokers site selectors etc we will be reaching out then driving people to a website. Mm -hmm. You know, economic development is not necessarily about the volume of traffic. It's going to be about the quality of traffic. I mean, if we get, you know, one good business that finds us through this initiative, it, it can be a game changer in this town, right? So, and we know we'll get more than one. Mm -hmm. So, I, I like the fact that we're, we're out putting together. The marketing mm -hmm. campaigns and plans that are going to drive people to a website that should be more friendly, and yes, we can we can then measure the traffic. So I love that part. The other thing I like about the timing is, is that right now, you know, we're doing this all in. All right, it's going to cost us seven thousand bucks for this this Quinnipiac 
we just paid him the first of four um, stipends. Yeah, but anyway, we just yeah, seventeen hundred fifty bucks, whatever it was. But all in, it's seven thousand dollars out of our twenty-five thousand dollar budget that we're paying the Quinnipiac students. Now, what we want to do, at least the way we've laid this thing out uh, from the get-go, is let's let's get some messaging into the marketplace. Let's get to the point where we can measure. We 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 we're, you know we we've got something out there, and boy, a success story or two. Wouldn't that be nice by early spring? Because that's when I've got to present a budget to the to the mayor. And if if we then say, Mayor, this is an initiative that that's is is you know promising or it's worked, and he's going to respond to it's worked, not that it's promising. And then we've got something to go, to go into the budget season saying, Mayor, we need another twenty grand next year in our marketing budget. And I think we know that we're going to get great support from the town council because they're always asking us whether we're getting enough. So, but we need to justify it. And so I think the timing of this, and that's why I keep pushing, you know, and I hope not, not too hard, let's get something in the market. Let's let's tiptoe, let's get something out there because if we, if we get a couple of wins, if we get a win, any anything that we can then, when we build that budget, even though it doesn't go into effect till July, we start building the thing in early March. You know, it, it's, it takes forever just because of the process. So if we're going to position ourselves so that we can ask for more money, if in fact we feel as a committee um, and as a commission that is is justifiable. So, I think the search engine optimization works two ways. One, it's how many people you're you have clicking on your site and seeing your stuff, but it's also how far out. So imagine an opposite click how far out it's reaching out and clicking other people. You know what I'm saying? Consider everybody else a click. And we are the ones that are reaching out and clicking them instead of them clicking us. So there's two aspects. And that's why they're kind of doing everything simultaneously because everything feeds off of each other. It becomes, it, they're just, um, just points in which they all touch and they all start to give uh, more attention to who we are coming our way by people clicking on our site and going out, reaching out to people as well. I, I'm thinking as we're going along with this process that Tim, and I know he's got it in his mind, is, is talking to the mayor. I want to spend a little bit less time. You're gonna, I'm going to need an assistant or another person involved in this, that type of thing. I'm thinking that person should be more the, the person who's going to be in charge of the um, the websites, the social media, the you know all of the messaging. T Tim's expertise is meeting the brokers, seeing the seeing the companies who want to come in. Let me show you our town, that type of thing. But we're going to need somebody who's going to have to constantly look at these websites and look at these social medias and say, okay, um, this is the message we want to send today. This is what we're going to do a week from now. This is what we're going to do a month from now. Have it all laid out. Um, so I think as an expenses concern, and that's between the mayor and the budget and all that mm -hmm. stuff, and he's already, he's already said to Tim, I'm going to get you a copy, so, mm -hmm. or whoever, uh, let's get that person in and, yep. and start them into this process also, because we're at that point now where we're going to have to start making those decisions. And if we get it up and running, and he's got to be the one who manages it, yeah. he's not going to be able to manage it very well, or he's going to yep. be taken away from the business that we've got going now. I yep. think we're trying agree on that yeah yeah mark you're absolutely right you're absolutely right definitely need to and in our contract with the website for wallingford they don't do search engine optimization they don't do anything like that they just basically put up what we want on the site they're not advertising they're not marketing for us at all so right. that person just like just like um i forget what the gentleman's name uh was when he put up the site that he showed us it looked like this it looked like the first site that we saw it was like wow you're showing me the same thing no it's how he structured it it's what he put there that okay. all attracts and, 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 and don't forget, everyone. We the way we structure this, and Tim, you had the, you said this right from the very beginning. It, well, our relationship with QI, and, and let's not forget that they're getting a lot out of this too. It might not necessarily be measured in monetary compensation, but um, just the feedback that we're giving them uh, in terms of how they're behaving and the, the contents and the quality of their contents is giving them tremendous amount of um, uh, confidence in, in their uh, their ability. That's going to translate to many advantages that they're going to have but uh, getting back to that we structured this team to be last more than one year so certainly uh this is in perpetuity perhaps perhaps this is a two you know a two or three year process or longer so 
um, yeah, we'll still have access to these to these folks for for a long time as we progress with this process. And yeah, who we who we hired, they'll have that in mind too. The information that they put up on the site, where they put the information, how they make it all connect, that'll also add to the search engine optimization. That was the trying to make. One of the strengths that this group has compared to an individual is they're able to look at uh, collectively discuss many different viewpoints, things that one person in by themselves may not consider, can, excuse me, consider. So, yeah, I agree. We may have one person in Wallingford that will help monitor that. But I think having this a group of, uh, of these college kids uh, is tremendously advantageous for sure. Good. Very good. So we're planning all on being on tomorrow, 8 o'clock. Same, same place, yes. same station? Yeah. Okay. Yes. David, David will send the link out. Very good. Okay. Anything else before we adjourn? No. no, it's always wonderful seeing you guys. Thank you for your time. I sure appreciate yeah. it. A lot of good time being put in here. And yeah, yeah. Longford appreciates it. Yeah, thanks very much, guys. Take it easy, guys. Have a great day have yourself. Great Talk to you tomorrow. Day. We'll see you in the morning. Okay, bye-bye, guys.